Hello and welcome to another one of our speaker interviews ahead of our signature event, which is the third edition of it, LCU 19, that is going to be in beautiful Puerto de Sawyer in Mallorca, Spain. And I cannot wait to introduce you to our next fabulous speaker, who is, of course, Jimena de la Serna. Hello. Hello, Hannah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am super excited. I'm super happy. I mean, we're still very early in the year, but I just, I just kind of like, I was already making plans about November. I'm like, yes to November. It's a power month. I know, right? This is going to be the best. Actually, November for me has turned from one of the worst months in the year to one of the best just because of this event. But I might be slightly biased. I'm not sure. Just a little bit. Not just too a, much. Just a tad. Right. For those of you uh, who don't know, I would want to ask you, Jimena, what is it that you do? Well, I'm Jimena de la Serna, like you said. I am from Colombia, but I live in London since 2007. So it's going to be 12 years this year. So by the time that you meet me in November, it's already been 12 years that I moved to this country. I love it here. I'm a certified nutritional therapist. Uh, life changes a lot because... I originally studied journalism and filmmaking in at university, so a long, long time has, ago. <laughs> yeah, long. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I like to think that it was yesterday when I graduated, and it was actually two years ago that they they sent me the invitation for the tenth anniversary of my promotion. Like, and I'm like, um, you surely they surely misunderstood something. Absolutely. And I still feel like I literally just graduated like maybe a couple of years ago or something. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Um, it's a long story. I always try to like condense it in the fact that I suffer from polycystic ovarian syndrome since I was 13. And that kind of like marked my life forever. <clears throat> Even without knowing back then, like my life was going to take such a turn. I was going to study communication, uh, journalism, uh, filmmaking, all of this. And, and, but PCOS was always going to be there for me. And eventually is what made me take the turn into nutritional therapy, into like really dealing with something that was with me for over 20 years and getting rid of it just thanks to nutritional therapy and this low carb lifestyle. So it's a very long story because it took like 20 years to realize the whole thing. Oh, well. <laughs> Better late than never, right? Hey, but, but that's, that's, that's the condensed form of what I do, who I am, and why I ended up here in this spot of the world and, and, and of the science, if you want. <laughs> Fantastic. I also know that you focus primarily on women's health and women's endocrinology and hormones and stuff in your work. That's correct. So that's correct because... Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's because of the PCOS and everything. I, I mean, I am a feminist and we all are, right? Yes, absolutely. And I discovered from the beginning, like the first thing I remember when I was properly diagnosed, taking, uh, keep in mind that I started showing the effects of PCOS at age 13 or 12, 12 to 13. <clears throat> But I was never properly diagnosed until I was 27. Yeah. Wow. So, wow, exactly. So I lived all my teen years losing my hair. I lost almost like 50% of my hair, uh, terrible acne, uh, problems of all kinds with the PCOS and everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what was happening to me. Like all the doctors could tell me was, you've got alopecia, you've got severe acne, mm -hmm. you've got this, you've got that, you've got insulin resistance, you've got la la la. But they, they were just listing the the symptoms yeah. without realizing what was happening to me. Yeah. And um, when I was 27, I actually thought how unfair it is that it took me all these years to be properly diagnosed and what could have been done if I was diagnosed earlier. And I thought that um, there was a lot of unknown things or I just, I just don't want to come out harsh, but, <laughs> but it's true. Like, like things against women are everywhere. And I'm just not just saying that they're against us and they don't want to investigate what happens to us. But what I'm saying is 
like PCOS is an is an illness or a condition that affects one in seven women. I am sure if there was a hormonal condition that affected one in seven men, they would probably know a lot about it. It would be cured. It, exactly. It will be cured. And so how, it, how is it that I was 27, that I was in the 21st century, and that I had to spend 20, day, 20 years of my life with that debilitating condition without nobody telling me anything yeah. and also telling me that I was just going to live with it forever and there was nothing to do with it. That's incredible. So that's the reason why I decided to focus on women's endocrinology systems and women's hormones and anything. So incredibly women. well and you inspire so many, many women. And I can't believe <laughs> that uh, we get the pleasure of welcoming you to Mallorca. Thank you so much, Hannah. I'm so happy that you invited me. I was like, yes! <laughs> anyway, so this is the, the main question, I feel, of this short little interview. And that is, what is the one thing that women do wrong for their, in order to sort of miss their, their ultimate health? So how do they sort of, what do they do wrong so that they don't get to their ultimate health? I would say two things, but really one of those things is, is related to the other. Okay. So let me explain. Go. The main thing will be believing that women are men of smaller size. Yes. So the, that brings us to the second thing that really is part of the first thing, which is ignoring completely our hormonal cycles yeah. that make us completely different to men. Yes. So we try to eat like men we try to um train like men and i'm not saying that oh god like i can see i i said i'm a feminist i'm not saying that we are different as in <laughs> we are inferior or they're superior or they are inferior like please god do not take that route because you know like they're gonna say that i'm saying that someone is inferior or superior that's not the case what i'm saying is that we're freaking different yeah and until we realize what it is that makes us as human beings, uh, as female human beings, beings, we won't be able to actually claim all our health. Yeah. Because like it or not, we are hormonal creatures, both men, women, animals, vegetables, everything is ruled by hormones and chemicals and biochemistry. And it would be stupid to try and treat, I don't know, a bird with the biochemistry of i don't know a little bird with the biochemistry of an ostrich or yeah, exactly. of a bi completely weird or biochemistry of a bunny or something like that yeah. so that's the, the the main thing is that let's stop believing that we are men of smaller size and let's actually realize that we have an extra biohacker thing to track and to be amazed by which is our cycles really? which is something that men don't have um they don't have They're all these data yeah, they're missing out. It's extra data. It's really fascinating when you learn to like, take data on it, like temperatures, and you can see so many things in your cycle that every cycle, they happen exactly at the same time. And they're telling you a lot of things that if you like, if you are like, like, like a nerd and you like data and all of that, it's something else for you to track, which is quite amazing. And it can, it can bring you to your ultimate health just by tweaking the little things that makes us um, female. Yeah, that's a very good answer. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what are you looking forward to the most? Or actually, what are your expectations for LCU 19? Well, um, I was a Keto Ladies 2018. Yeah. And it was such an amazing experience that all I expect is to have the same experience, but during more days and yeah. maybe even better because it's going to be, I, I guess, more people. Uh, it's going to be a different time of year as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to connect with new people, to meet the new speakers that I haven't met. Actually, the fact that, that this brings us the opportunity to connect with other people who are relevant in this arena, but they are too far. Like you guys are bringing them to Europe, which is pretty rare because it's usually us, we have to go to yes. America, right? <laughs> or we have to go to other parts of the world. Whereas this time is them coming here. 
and actually having the opportunity to meet them, uh, to learn new things, to connect through a human level, to have like human connection because it's like four or five days together. Um, I, I, I thrive on, on human to human communication, human to human, like touch, talk. I thrive on that. And I'm looking forward to spending time with all these people, like a lot, a lot. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to exactly the same things. And one more question. Why should people join you and me and all the other people at LCU19? Well, because first of all, like I said, pretty rare in Europe. You usually have to travel all the way to America, all the way to Canada, all the way, I don't know, to so many places that are far away. I believe this is the only one in Europe, right? Pretty much. Am I right? Yes, pretty much. So that is the main reason that you don't have to travel far. It's all happening here. It's an amazing bunch of people. And I'm telling you guys, I've told you this before, but the organization by you and Vite is flawless. Like I told you the last time you make us feel like everything, like nothing went wrong. Like everything just happened on its own. Yeah. And we know that none of that happens <laughs> on, the, on its own. But you made us feel like it happens on its own. So that's amazing. People are going to enjoy. People are going to learn. Not only that, people who come to see us a local universe, they're going to actually connect with the people they follow and they trust in a human one-on-one level. Like we have meals together. We, we sleep together. <laughs> we go swimming you. together if we're crazy enough. We're swimming together if we're crazy enough. Like, I didn't march. I don't know about November, but hey, why not? Like, why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? If I am able to get into the water in this country, I am able to get into the water there. Definitely. In November. Sounds so it's going to be amazing. Fantastic. And this and it's an opportunity to be, like, actual with the human beings behind all of this and not just yeah. more theory or more talks or, like, massive things where you don't actually meet anyone. You just go and see them and hear them from afar no this is like hands-on like come on and meet us yes come hang out with us in beautiful exactly. new york spain from the 12th to the 17th of november and you will find more information on lcu.thelowcarbuniverse.com and thank you so much muchas 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 gracias <laughs> pretty pretty jimena and i can't wait to meet you there same, same thing, Hannah. Thank you so much. I can't wait to meet everybody that is going to come to this edition, meet new faces, meet the new speakers, and, and especially the new attendees. Like, I want to connect with more people. So thank you so much for this. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>